What's up, everybody? How do? Let's see. We are here to talk about this week's books. Uh, everything that is coming into the shop this week. We're doing an unboxing video uh, for Johnny Destructo's Hero Complex, 4327 Main Street, Philadelphia, PA. It's a little comic shop. You should come down, hang out, buy some stuff, and talk about comics with us because that's our favorite thing to do. And we're going to do that today, actually, as soon as I go through this mail. Here we go. Recycling. Um, all right. Oh, and if you guys have any comments or questions, do it. Do it in the... No, this way. Do it in the comment box. There it is. I'll, I'll see it over here. We are streaming on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. So you can find us on all of those platforms. So let's start with DC Comics, because uh, that's the box that is closest to me. Last week, Infinite Frontier number one came out. It was a new miniseries. I think it's a six-issue miniseries, and that is dealing with what is currently going on in the DC universe. And then this one shot in front of Secret Files, and it is a... Perfect bound, double size, triple size issue. Uh, and let's see, let's see what the creative team is. We got Brandon Thomas, Joshua Williamson, Valentin Delandro. Who else? Stephanie Phillips, Joshua Williamson, and Naka Miranda. Dan Waters, Joshua Williamson, Stephen Byrne. And I believe these are all different digital first one shots. It's, it's an anthology of like little tiny stories that they put together um, that deals with a lot of the heroes in Infinite Frontier, including Bones. Was it Mr. Bones? Um, President Superman and Jade and Obsidian, who are Green Lantern's kids. So, yeah, it's a little bit of just extra stories from the main characters. Oh, and Psycho Pirate from Crisis on Infinite Earths, who plays a major part in the new Infinite Frontier series with a dope-ass new costume. So, yeah, Infinite Frontier Secret Files comes out tomorrow. And let's see, we got that. I'm just live streaming. Don't mind me. Uh, let's see. Oh, so DC Comics has pulled away from Diamond Comics, from Diamond Distributors. So uh, it used to be I could just go through the previews order and decide what to order for the shop. And then they, had, they split off from Diamond. But in doing so, they didn't have an actual physical catalog of things that I could order or like hand to customers so that they could see what's coming out in a couple months so they could place pre-orders and what have you. And they put out a digital only version of that, which sucks. No one looked at it. No one cared about it. But now, finally, DC Connect, they're actually sending out um, a little catalog on what is coming from DC Comics. So you can go through and be like, oh, snap. Suicide Squad King Shark is coming out. I didn't know that. I want that. Are you afraid of Darkseid? That's kind of cute, actually. Are you afraid of Darkseid? That's adorable. Um, Harley Quinn is getting her own series from the cartoon, the much beloved cartoon where her and Poison Ivy are a couple, and it's super cute. So they're getting its own little um, animated series comic. Oh, written by T. Franklin, who you may know from... Um, Bingo Love, uh, which is a really cute POC LBG, LGBTQ uh, story. Black Manta. So yeah, basically you can get DC Connect, go through um, page by page and see what all of the new series and issues are going to be. There's a new Deathstroke Incorporated. There's a new Aquaman. And then you could let me know, oh, I want this. So DC finally got off its ass. Oh, and if you like, um, what was that? What was that uh, show uh, or comic? Uh, Fables. So Fables is actually doing a Batman crossover. So it's Big B Wolf and Batman because they're both detectives. That makes sense. So yeah, anyway, DC Connect. 
free preview so that you can figure out what you want to order before it's too late. Because a lot of people call up shop and they're like, oh, this thing came out yesterday or two weeks ago. Could you have it? No, it's gone. So now you can pre-order. All right. Oh, and then on the back is the checklist. So you can go through the issue, mark off the checklist of which books you want to order each month, and then hand it to me, and then I'll order them in for you. Um, let's see. Space Jam, A New Legacy. Little comic. Ah. How much is DC Connect? It's free. I think. Hi, Matt Feldman. Uh, yeah, it's free. Well, it's free for you. I have to pay for them. But it's free for customers. Um, yeah, so there's a Space Jam tie-in comic book for the Space Jam sequel. There is The Mystery of the Meanest Teacher, a Johnny Constantine graphic novel. An unabashedly fun book from two comics champions, uh, Ryan North and Derek Charm. So basically it's like, uh, I don't even know if it's teenage, like preteen John Constantine, which is kind of cool. And it's got Etrigan the Demon. This looks cute. As a John Constantine fan, I always alternate Constantine and Constantine. Um, as a fan, this might be kind of fun. I'll check this out. Is there anything I can help you guys find? From Devil, like a like, more Devil Dinosaur? Yeah, I mean. Or just any like. Well, I mean that's perfect. You're that in the all ages range. section there. Okay. Yeah. So everything. That's all good stuff there. You might want to try Miss Marvel. Mom, Miss Marvel's really good. Oh yeah, yeah. She's awesome. Um. Oh yes, Matthew. He says, "What you have to pay, but can't pass along the cost." Yeah. That's also how free comic book day works. The, the comic books do not come to the retailers for free. We buy all of the comic books, and then we give them out to you for free. Um, it's not like we get them for free. I'm making a post-it so that I remember to give you a copy of DC Connect. Boop. Yeah, a lot of people think that free comic book day is like free for everyone, but no, the comic book stores, I pay for them to hand them out to you guys. Uh, okay, another copy of The Mystery of the Meanest Teacher by John Constantine. Let's see. Batman and Scooby Doo Mysteries Extravaganza, double sized issue number one. And Catwoman Annual, the 2021 annual by Ram V and Kyle Hotz. So anybody who has Catwoman on their list, I automatically order in the annuals because it's part of the subscription service. So if you get Catwoman on your list, you're already getting that. And here is a alternate cover. Same issue, different cover. This looks like, like it's by Liam Sharp, um, who just recently did the Batman Reptilian series that's coming out. Um, and he does a lot of stuff that looks a little bit like um, Bill Sienkiewicz meets the cover artist from Sandman. Uh, oh, this week, Green Arrow, 80th anniversary, 100-page super spectacular, and there are many, many different covers, and I will go through them with you. Um, so here is the 1940s cover by Daniel Warren Johnson. Uh, 
Um, that's the 1950s cover. Here's the 1940s cover by Michael Cho, with showcases all of the trick arrows that Green Arrow and Speedy use. Uh, da -da -da -da. This is the 1990s cover by Howard Porter. When Green Arrow was dead and there was a new Green Arrow, his son. This is the 2000s cover by Jen Bartell, which is lovely. I always love her color work. Everything's so soft and sort of vibrant. I love it. Um, ooh, 2010s by Simone DeMeo, again with the vibrant colors. Very nice. Ooh, America Chavez is great. America Chavez is dope. I like her a lot. She's real cool. Um, this is, oh, I think this is just the main cover. Who is this? Who drew this? Oh, J Dan Mora. Of course he did. Dan Mora drew the main cover. That guy's all over the joint. I love him. I don't know how he draws as much as he does. This is the 1970s cover by Derek Chu. So we've got Green Arrow and uh, Black Canary. And, oh, classic Neil Adams 1960s cover. And my man needed to get an inker on this because it is very wobbly, very loose. Um, Neil Adams always does better when he has an inker, in my humble opinion. And one more. Oh, this is oh, 1980s variant cover by Gary Frank. Look at that. Look at that. How nice that is. That's like next level Gary Frank. I didn't even realize this was Gary Frank, and I'm a huge Gary Frank fan. Oh, also Matthew Feldman, who is uh, commenting on the live stream, says America Chavez is amazing. So don't take it just from me. Take it from Matthew Feldman. Yeah. Yeah, we live, I live stream every Tuesday at 2 o'clock, and we show all of the different unboxing, all the different things that are coming out. All right, what's next? I'll tell you. It's Teen Titans Academy. Teen Titans Academy 2021 yearbook. So basically how we had the Catwoman 2021 um, annual. They're calling this the yearbook, which is cute because it's an academy. Mm. Ah. Ah. Mm. Like in school. Just like in school. Yeah. The Roy Harper Academy, to be exact. And this is another anthology where it's got a couple of different um, stories. And it's actually laid out like a yearbook, which is kind of cute with like signatures. Pretty cute. Yeah, this looks, this looks good. It's got David LaFuente on one of the stories who I like a lot. I first noticed him with the Ultimate Spider-Man series like 10 years ago. Rafa Sandoval, who does the Teen Titans Academy main series. Fun, fun series. I always I've got a soft spot for the Teen Titans. And then here's the alternate cover. You guys still doing all right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. What's next? Oh, so those are the main issues from DC Comics this week. But we also have, take care, y'all. We also have Suicide Squad Casualties of War, which is an older Suicide Squad series by um, Giffen and Padina. So... I'm really looking forward to the Suicide Squad movie by James Gunn. That looks really, really fun. I'm very stoked about it. So this is Casualties of War, which collects uh, Suicide Squad from 2001, issues 1 through 12 by Keith, De Keith Giffen 
and penciler Paco Medina and inker Joe Sanchez. So yeah. And the team for this is Major Disaster, Killer Frost, Deadshot, Black Star, and Reactron. I don't know Reactron. He's new to me. And oh, one of my favorite all-time runs on The Flash by Mark Wade. So this is The Flash by Mark Wade, Volume 8. A lot of good stuff in here. I remember really liking this, including that costume. I love The Flash always gets alternate costumes, and I love this is one of my favorites. I really like the design of it, like the right off the shoulder, the zigzag. Um, Future State is still being collected in these big, giant trade paperbacks. And this is the Future Man, or the Future Man, which is a funny show. I watched uh, Future Man on Hulu, I think it is. Uh, it's very juvenile. It's like Kevin Smith humor, but uh, it's pretty funny. Um, Future State. Superman. So these are all the Future State Superman series. So it's got Future uh, Future State Superman and Metropolis, Worlds of War, Superman versus Imperious Lex, Kara zor -El Superwoman, Legion of Superheroes, and the House of L. So that's what I like about these Future State trades is that it's not just each of those different stories in a different trade. They, they are lumping them together, which is cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, and the Superman by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason Omnibus. I do love me some Peter J. Tomasi. He does really good, like, father-son stories. So this is um, – they've designed it so that if you put them side by side, this is the Superman by Peter J. Tomasi, which him and Super – you know, Super Son – or, you know, John Kent. And then the one that goes along with it is the Batman and Robin one. So he's drawn both covers so that they match. So you can put them side by side. Very cool. All right. So that's DC. Wait, I'm not done. That's not DC. Hold on. I lied. Batman by John Ridley, the deluxe edition. So this is a nice little hardcover, which is only... Seventeen ninety nine, and this is by specifically the writer John Ridley, who um, is the award-winning writer of Twelve Years a Slave. Um, so, like the first time of Gotham City's Dark Knight from Academy Award-winning writer John Ridley, and a host of comics neck top artists. Um, so, this has Future State, the next Batman one through four. And select stories from Detective Comics, Batman Black and White, and Batman the Joker War Zone. So, yeah. There's that. And then they just put out the hardcover for Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn. Uh, Batman White Knight by Sean, Sean Murphy. Sean, Sean Gordon Murphy is his name. Um, really good uh, first series. There was a sequel. Um, which I haven't read yet. And then this is the follow-up, Harley Quinn. It's very cool. Um, except this is by a novelist, Katana Collins, and artist Mateo Scalera. So it takes place in Sean Murphy's Big Night universe, but um, by a different team. And that one has been selling out real quick. So I got to stack them. Is there anything I can help you guys find? No, I'm just looking at Cool. All right. Next up, we have the diamond delivery. So, Altiminal, number eight. With a super spooky ass cover. I love that. Um, Barbaric is a new series. Vault comic. Uh, there's two different covers. And the, the quote on the cover is from Scott Snyder. It says, what you want and way, way more. So I got a couple issues, a couple copies of this from Michael Moriti and Nathan Gooden, which has some nice artwork as well. Owen the Barbarian has been cursed to do good with what remains of his life. His bloodthirsty weapon axe has become his moral compass with a drinking problem. 
Together they wander the realm, foredoomed to help any who seek assistance, but there is one thing Owen hates more than a life with rules, witches. So, barbaric, number one, with two different covers. And there's his sentient axe that has a drinking problem, apparently. Looks kind of I like maybe in the realm of headlopper. Beta Ray Bill from Marvel Comics from Michael Warren Johnson, who's awesome. Um, number four. Black Cat Annual, number one. So Black Cat Annual, number one, by Jed McKay, Infinite Destinies. Yeah, is Doom Patrol is really far. Yeah. And, uh, I can't think of anything that should help me. Yeah. But Kate Carson. No, Kate Carson, yeah. Kate Carson has a cybernetic eye, is That's the name of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do we have murder talking? Murder or Let's see. Let's see. Another alternate cover by Ron Lim. Hello. Uh, Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade. Yeah. But it starts Moon Knight, who goes after the Avengers. Like, systematically takes down each of the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Is that an SLC punk tattoo? It is. I met, I met him shortly after I got it done, uh, and he's coming back around again this year. I'm going to meet him again and see if he remembers me, because it was like five years ago. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Black Widow, eight from Kelly Thompson, one of my current favorite Marvel writers. She's been doing a great job, and I'm very excited. She's going to be taking over, um, well, partly taking over. She's going to be part of the writing team on Amazing Spider-Man. So that's, I'm stoked about that. Blade Runner 2029 from Mike Johnson. This is number five. There's a bunch of different variant covers. Oh, this one's really cool. By Danny. I don't know, I don't know Danny, but that's a cool cover. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer new issue. This is actually a one shot about Giles called Tea Time. I've actually just started rewatching all of Buffy from season one. It takes a little while to get going, but I still love it. And it's got a foil variant cover as well. I was a little. Um, disturbed to find out that I, I am currently the age, I'm older than the actor was when he started playing Giles in 1997. I am older than Giles in the, by one year. He was, he was 42 when he started playing Giles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Canto and the City of Giants, number three. Uh, oh, so there's a new miniseries starting by Christopher Cantwell called The United States of Captain America. And number one comes out tomorrow. Nice cover by Alex Ross. And from my understanding, it looks like Cap is going to be going around um, and meeting other, you know, other heroes who have been, um, 
what's the word, who have been, who look up to Cap, right? And they decide they're going to be a type of Captain America for their own hometown. Um, this is drawn by Dave Eaglesham, which is kind of cool. So there's the Alex Ross wraparound cover, which is really nice with all the different, couple different iterations of Cap. You've got Falcon, you've got Steve Rogers, uh, Bucky as Cap, and U.S. Agent as Cap. Oh, Melly G, what's up? How's it going? Uh, Matt says, Captain America, please put it on your subscription. You got it, sir. Will do. I love my post-its. See, this is why I'm not on the Watchers Council. I can't even keep my post-its. Here we go. Matt Feldman subscription. Will do. Melly G, I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? If you've been here, you've been lurking. It's good. It's good that you're chiming up. Been crazy busy, but doing well. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, there's a Todd Nock variant cover for the United States of Cap. And um, I don't know who this is by, but I guess this is Aaron Fisher, who is the Captain America of the Railways. Yes, I've been lurking. <laughs> Like this. This is Melly. Uh, so yeah, all right. Sorry, I'm eavesdropping on. Uh, oh, Matt says I'm off to do a thing. Toodles. Bye, Matt. All right, next up we got Marvel Action Captain Marvel from Mags Visaggio uh, and Sweeney Boo. Oh, no, not Mags Visaggio. My bad. Sam Mags. You can understand why I'd be confused. Um, and it's got Squirrel Girl. Number four, Chained to the Grave, number one. Or, I'm sorry, number four. Still going right? Yeah, great. Any questions? Okay. Uh, crossover number seven. And uh, this is not by Donnie Cates and Jeff Shaw, as the past six issues have been. They've crossed that out on the cover, and they've written in Chip Zdarsky and Phil Hester and Andy Parks. So uh, there's going to be a new team for this. I guess, I'm assuming for this one issue. But um, pretty fun. Oh, and there's a special guest star I just saw. I spoiled it for myself like a dingbat. Daredevil number 31, also by Chip Zdarsky. This is number 31, but it's part one of a new storyline called Lockdown. Really nice cover with the angel wings and the flowing fabric and the bloody mask. Yeah. And... There is an alternate cover. This month they're doing Sinister Villains, so each one is for um, a different Spider-Man villain. So Daredevil's fighting the Shocker. Not to be confused with the finger move. Department of Truth, number 10, from James Tinney and the Fourth and Martin Simmons. Really, really good indie series. Uh, highly recommended, especially if you're interested in um, conspiracy theories and how they sort of shape the world. Very, very, very cool book. Dune, House of Treaties, number eight. I have never read or watched a Dune, but I'm aware of it. And I know they're making a new Dune film. Eternals, number five, from Kieran Gillen and Isad Rabish. Um... The new Marvel, what are the new Marvel movies that's coming out for phase four? Very excited. The first issue of this was really, really good. Godzilla has a new one shot called Rivals versus Hedora? 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 Hedora. Let's say Hedora. 
And it looks like it's kind of on the YA tip. Um, Xander Cannon's Kaiju Max Season 6, Number 2. Suggested for mature readers for kaiju drug use, made-up cuss words, copious blood and guts, and frankly, tons of weird crap. Kaiju Max. Made in Korea by Jeremy Holt. We read the first issue of this and discussed it on the podcast. We really liked it. Um, really curious to see where this is headed. Basically, um, for some reason, um, there are these AI children. I don't know if the, if the world stopped being able to reproduce, but now they've got these AI children that you can adopt, you know, buy. Made in Korea. Very good first issue. Money Shot, Scientists Turn Porn Stars by, um, um, what is her name? Tim Seeley and Sarah Beatty. So this is definitely not an all ages book. But it's pretty funny. Uh, there is a second cover of Money Shot by Austin Marie that I can't show you because it's in plastic and it's hidden from you hidden from your delicate monstrous number 35 by marjorie lou and sanita tanaka takeda yeah if there's any D, &D stuff you want just let us know we'll order it in my Little Pony Transformers The Magic of Cybertron, number three. Parasomnia by Colin Bunn. Hmm. What is this? I'm not sure what this is about. Parasomnia? Which has like. A neat cover. And Power Rangers Unlimited, number one. Edge of Darkness. Um, tonight is Movie Club, so every other Tuesday is either Movie Club or Graphic Novel Club, and tonight we're doing Pixar's Luca, so we'll be meeting on Zoom at 8 o'clock to discuss Luca. We just watched it this morning, and holy cats, it's adorable. Yes. Highly recommend it. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, there's still time. You can watch Luca today, and then tonight at 8 o'clock, hang out on Zoom with us to discuss um, and then next Tuesday is book club, and we'll be talking about um, yeah. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Red Room number two, The Antisocial Network by Ed Piscor. Oh, is that Die? Rat Queens. Oh, Rat Queens is also very good. Also, Die. Die. Die by Kieran Gillen, the guy who did Wicked and Divine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's another one where um, if you think Jumanji, basically a bunch of kids get sucked into a D&D &D world of their own making, into their own quest. Um, and then when they return, one of them does not come back. So then as adults, they decide to go back again to go get them and then, you know, the S hits the F. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi um, versus the Marvel Universe. So this is Shang-Chi number two, which is versus Captain America. 
um, the other the other cool thing about Zai is that um, the creator Karen Gillen um, also is making the game itself so you'll be able to actually play their game so this is the variant cover uh, spawn number 319 so last week was a pretty big issue spawns universe number one is a one shot um, and there's gonna be new spawn series uh, this is just continuing the main spawn series which is 319 uh, with a couple of variant covers and the uh, Todd McFarlane black and white variant cover. <laughs> Giant size, Amazing Spider-Man, The Chameleon Conspiracy, number one, by Nick Spencer, Ed Brisson, and a bunch of different artists. So this is a one-shot that wraps up the Chameleon Conspiracy mini um, storyline that's been going on. What's up, action figure expert? How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, here is the variant cover by Ryan Stegman, where he's punching the chameleon so hard that his disguise has come off. Uh, apparently, he was disguised as an old woman, and so this is Spider-Man clocking an old woman in the face. You love to see it. Uh, Marvel Action Spider-Man, number three. So this is the YA, the all-ages Spider-Man storyline, or comic book. <laughs> so Spectre Inspectors, number five, which I'm surprised it's taken this long to have someone named Ghost Hunters Spectre Inspectors. It's a good name. Star Wars Adventures, The Weapon of a Jedi, number two. Um, Star Wars Adventures, Tales of Villainy. Star Wars Doc Afra. Number 11 was part of the War of the Bounty Hunters storyline that's going on through all the Star Wars books. And there is a variant cover for Pride Month. And some more Star Wars. We've got the High Republic, number six. And I'll show you in a little bit. We have some more High Republic Star Wars stuff in the box as well. I'll show you those when we get to them. Um, speaking of Pride Month variant, the High Republic Pride Month variant. Um, Witch Blood number four, introducing Texas Red. That Texas Blood. which is a Western crime. Transformers Beast Wars, number five. Undone by Blood, The Other Side of Eden, by Lonnie Nadler and Zach Thompson. This is another sort of Western crime drama. Usagi Yojimbo, Dragon Bellow Conspiracy. It says Stan Sakai on the on the on the cover, but that is not Stan Sakai artwork. Hey. Yeah. Everyone tells him that. They do. I love to hear it. Not a single time that I We only find them when they're dead. Number seven by Al Ewing and Simone DeMeo. And white, chapter one, 
So this is a follow-up. If you don't know about it, there's no reason you should. Um, the connection between this and an older series called Black. Uh, so there was a series from Black Mask called Black where it was a world where only black people got superpowers. Uh, there was black and then there was black AF. And now there's this follow-up called white, which I don't know what the, like how this relates other than the obvious. Um, I'm curious to see what happens with white people in the black universe. Um, so yeah, there's that. Also, for you know, I come, I run into a lot of people online who will, if there's a post about a storyline directed at women or people of color, people who aren't just straight whites, straight white dudes, um, and they don't believe me. But since I have come down to my shop today, Brian's running. Hi, Brian. Hey. Since I have come down to my shop, there have been. For every six women, mm -hmm. one dude. Yeah, and there were two dudes that were in here before you got here. Uh -huh. However, a lot of there's a lot of women and other, yeah. you know, it has just been groups of people. Yeah, yeah, groups of uh, female presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 comic book readers, uh, and so it infuriates me when I see people online are like, no, oh, they make they're pandering to people who don't even read. They're they don't even read to a large demographic of their potential audience. Yeah. Just giving them things that they would be interested in. Not me. <laughs> uh, and that's the other thing about pandering, right? Like people right. bring up pandering anytime they see like a like any hero of color or whatever. Yeah. It's like they were pandering to you before. Right. You're just upset yeah. that you're not the only one being pandered right. to. The only difference between pandering and offering an audience what they might want yeah. is your perspective. Yes. <laughs> like Wonderful. Right. Yes. Ah, oh, goodness. <laughs> is there a trade in the pipeline for specter inspectors? I want a copy, says Sid. Hmm. Sid? I think we should contact it the shall publisher be done. of Spectre Inspector. Oh, yeah. Be like, Sid says he would like... One copy. One, one copy. Trade. One trade, please. <laughs> one trade. Yes. That's it. Uh, so, all right. Um, so, add... I'm writing a note. Add, Is there, are they doing a trade of it? Of course. Oh, very cool. Spectre Inspectors. Uh, Sid. Eh. I ran, I ran out of post-it. Trade paperback. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Brian, says Melly G. Hi. Hey, Melly G. Hey. Melly G. That's oh. what I said. I said Melly G. Yes. I've seen you on Facebook, but not interacted with you in a while. How is everything? We will wait until she responds. That's all right. Silence, please. Nobody else respond. <laughs> no, nope, it's too late. Molly, Molly Hebert Wilson said, hi, hi, hi. Uh, hi. I assume she's talking to me and not Melly G, but hi, hi, hi. Yeah. I missed most of the books. You did. I did. That's because you were doing a great job. Thank you. Interacting with the customers. Thank you. I do like to interact. It's fun. We were talking about, uh, my friend Kelly and I were talking about laser hair removal yesterday. Sure. Sure. Who right. doesn't? Who doesn't talk I mean, about that? I've talked about um, it. And uh, it didn't even occur to me. Uh -huh. Do you remember uh -huh. on the podcast, Yeah. we were talking about Anthony Mackie's mustache in the the TV show um, Falcon, and Winter Fal Soldier. Yeah, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm, I kind of remember you talking about it. And I was like, yeah. my 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 nose my mustache hair uh -huh. it grows flips it flips up sure and it grows up and it uh -huh. tickles my nose yeah ah. and I was like I paused uh -huh. the Anthony Mackie scene yeah. <laughs> there's only one yeah I, I paused a scene <laughs> that had Anthony Mackie in and I was like look at that to my wife look at that. Uh -huh. He's got a pencil thin mustache. Uh -huh. He must trim down, right? From his nose. Yeah, he must. And you were like, well, I mean, it may not be because it itches uh -huh. his nose. I mean, maybe it's just like a, a like fashion a thing, choice. a style choice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Why don't and you so, get in there with some scissors? Listen, you know? listen, dog. That's... I went to Target and uh -huh. I picked up some, zzz, yeah, some yeah. buzzers, right? For uh -huh. my mustache, my mustache. Yeah. My mustache. You know, use it on the rest of the And I did. It's just that. Just that. Okay. Um, <laughs> And I tried to get the ones that shave as closely as possible. And like I'm like, this breed. seems like, uh, like a trimmer. Okay. And uh, it doesn't. It's not great. Well, you should have come to me, Jody, because I have a great trimmer. It's got a little vacuum in it. Vacuums va up the hairs what? that come off of you. And um, but you still, it's still hard to get you right still there. Still can and see. I have scissors. 
and I just trim them as short as the other ones that the trimmer does. That's you don't want hairs up your nose unless they grow there, and even then, sometimes you don't want the. It, it, it occurred to me yesterday yeah. that he is a, a uh, an actor with money. He is. And so that he probably gets it waxed. Yeah, or before every scene they take care of these people. No, that's what I'm saying, I mean? though. Like, yeah, I went sure. in with the trimmer, yeah. and it just looked like I had stubble. It wasn't gone. Oh, well, you need a razor to get it. Gone. How do you get a razor to just do the tip uh, to get the they, quarter of an inch? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. You do I do. Yeah. Hey, exactly. I don't know. Get a straight razor and take your <laughs> nose into your own hands. <laughs> uh, Molly, M Melly G says, I'm well, Brian. Excellent. Great. Oh, good All right. The Witcher, Witch's Lament. See, huh. we were just biding time until Mel Melly G uh, responded. Exactly, as we said we would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Witcher, Witch's Lament, huh. number two. Oh. Wax it, says Melly G. There you go. I'm, not gonna, I'm never going to do that. I will never... Plus, wax my own you anything. might not wax it straight and then there would be a very well-defined <sighs> that's true diagonal line that's true <laughs> yeah. x factor number 10 part yeah. of the hellfire gala they're gonna dance and they're having a good time they're having a that's nice they're dancing it up i like to see that kind of thing yeah <laughs> and this is the variant the pride variant by um to phil jimenez oh. of north star <laughs> That's cool. Hey, how about that North Star Pride variant from the Pride comic? That was a cool looking, oh, cool yeah. looking Pride variant. I remember that. Yeah. Very striking. Yeah. When I was about to go to college, says Molly, uh -huh. I tried to wax my own legs. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. I'm assuming. It did not go not well. Go well. Yes. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> uh, Young Hellboy number four of four, The Hidden Land by Mike Mignola and other folk. Oh. That's a nice cover. Huh. Sad. Young hell boy. Yeah. Very boyish. Yeah. I like it. Speaking of boyish, Brian, you probably missed it because we you were talking to customers. I think I did. Tonight is Movie Club. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about Pixar's the Luca. Boys. Oh. Pixar's The Boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. I haven't seen it. It's yeah, really good. good. We just watched it this morning. Oh, awesome. Uh, at the end, I had, I had tears. Oh, uh, Damien Connolly's You Promised Me Darkness oh. from Behemoth Comics. You promised me, I don't know what this is. Uh, and on the back it says, it reiterates, You Promised Me Darkness. Yeah, it does not want you to forget about this. How? Is this a note to you? <laughs> right. To JD? Yeah, it's um, in black and white. It's very dark. Uh, yeah. Afternoon, peeps. Oh, hey. I'm running errands, so I'll sit down and watch this later. Okay. I use this to see what's coming out that I might like. Keep up the good work, JD. Two exclamation points. Ooh, that's cool. Well, well, well. <clears throat> Two exclamation points. There it is. Got to scoop back so that people can see more of your grandeur. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, okay. Okay. Here's here's a fun here's a fun thing. Look at that. This damaged. is damaged. This is, dust in the this is how they showed up today. Anyway, that's that's a better way to illustrate yeah. the damage. Uh, and then there's this one. Also damaged. It looks like a little skate it's ramp. It's not just a fun 90s style gimmick cover yeah. that they have bent <laughs> for you. It's an actually damaged cover. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, I thought, well, I, there's more. I thought I was done. No. Cable, number 11, by Jer uh, Jerry Duggan and Phil Noto. There it is. Uh, Hal says Luca was really good. Oh, excellent. I concur, Dr. Hal. Hmm. Uh, and so for The Walking Dead, one through six, several months ago, they had David Finch come in and do character portraits. Character portraits where half of them is a zombie. Oh shit! Oh shit! I didn't even uh, notice that. And oh, then um, now he has come back, and they're doing second printings of seven through twelve, seven through twelve uh, of different character cool. with the half zombie face. Uh -oh. Pretty gross. What, what are those called, JD? They're, I remember DC did a, a month 
back in the early 2000s where there's just a close up of the characters based on everyone. Is there a particular portrait know, artist trade name for the a cover that is that? Portrait. Portrait cover. It's a portrait cover, maybe? Cool. I don't know. I don't... Sounds good to me. Oh. Hmm. Oh. What if it was just a bunch of objects? Like a still life cover? Still life cover, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, she, oh, she's sad about oh, it. My. Oh, my. Maybe she remembers the human she once was. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Maybe she's sad about something else. Maybe I don't have fish for lunch or something. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. she's sad that she doesn't even want fish. <sighs> like she she's like, I used to love, I used to have such a palate. Yeah. Now it's just brains. Now brains Other all the time. Pieces of human. Like all I want is brains. Yeah. But I want to want yeah. fish. She should season her brains with fish. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, those are the issues. Mm. Those are the issues. Mm. Ah, very heavy. And now here come the trade paperbacks. And those are the collected issues, correct? Collected issues. Or sometimes published originally as trades. That's true. Yeah. Well, those are graphic novels. They are. Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Who will be the all new Phoenix? Oh. The planet-burning cosmic firebird known as the Phoenix Force has returned, and the Avengers are drawn into a globe-spanning battle for ultimate power. Hmm. In a distant past of 1 million DC BCE, one young girl's only crime was being born with red hair. Oh, I have I have also engaged in that crime. Well, it's not your only crime. It's not my only crime. <laughs> to be fair. It was my first crime. That was the first one? Yeah, it was my baby crime. <laughs> your baby crime. And the her, first of your baby crimes. That's how I went on a baby crime spree yeah, yeah, as a that. toddler. Yeah. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Basically, trying to figure out who's going to be the next... Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. See? And this, this takes place, these humans are alive in 1 million BC. 1 million I gotta tell you, that's uh, you don't know about the the Avengers from back then. I do, and oh. it is cool. It is cool. Um, although, I shut up. This, well, I was gonna say there Molly were says, shut up. That time. Molly says, <laughs> or she should. What's happening? She should eat fish brains. Ah, uh, good thinking, Molly. Good thinking. You'd make a heck of a zombie counselor. That's right. Uh, action figure expert says, "Hey, question, Mister JD. Remember back in the day." When there was a difference between you send and comic book store books. Do you remember when you were not send and comic book shops, JD? Was there a difference what with home happening? subscription as well? Back in the day when there was a difference between, between you, you send and comic store books. Newsstand. Newsstand. Newsstand and comic book store books. Uh, was there a difference with home subscription? I had for as a birthday gift once. I had a subscription. I mean, you don't, you can. Do you not like to be on camera? No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I had one. I don't remember which one it was, but my guess would be those would be the direct markets. Uh -huh. <laughs> it would be the direct market comics. Yes. So whatever, I guess barcodes on those rather than the cover, right? Because uh -huh. it was yes. comic book stores that had the barcode. Yes. It would have been nice if you could get the art rather than the barcode on your cover for the people who weren't cared enough to go to the store. Um, but that's not how it was. No. Yeah. So I never um, knew that growing up, though. I would see yeah. those, the barcode versus the little image in the barcode uh -huh. spot. And I had no idea. I was like, what, the, what is going on here? Why is there no barcode? Yeah. And now I know. Now you know. I mean, I knew um, before. But although, that. even though I, I should have been able to figure it out, figure it out, I always thought the barcode was on the newsstand edition. And the face was on the other edition because it just, I guess, seemed more prestigious. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Also, publishing wise, JD, you said these aren't trade paperbacks if they're original graphic novels. That is not true. Um, trade paperback is, is kind of fallen out of favor, but larger paperback novels are also called trade paperbacks. Mm. So, I think it's just the binding. I did know that. Stuff. I did know that because okay. I've, I've ordered from other. Oh, sure. Like, I've ordered novels, and they're called mm -hmm. trade paperbacks. Right, right. And I'm like, why are these just called the same thing? Right. And I think there would be a differentiation between, like, a novel trade paperback yeah. and a comic book trade paperback. You would think so. I think yeah. it's just that the term didn't need differentiation originally, and yeah. then the market for comic trade paperbacks has grown. Yeah. And now everyone 
nobody calls the other kinds of books trade paperbacks anymore. I think true. those comics have taken them. Brian, yeah. When someone comes into the shop, Johnny mm-hmm. the Structos Hero Complex, forty three twenty seven Main Street in Philadelphia, PA, and they say, yeah. "You say, can I help you find anything?" Uh-huh. And they go, "Well, I really like graphic novels." Yeah. How do you respond to someone coming in and being like, "Graphic novels"? Well, I'll tell you I what. I like graphic novels. I often ask the question, "What are you folks into?" Ah, right. And then I What's try your to get kink? like the genre of thing that they're into. You know, like, oh, what kind of stories do you? You know, then yeah, they're yeah. like. Well, I don't really read comics. Hey, well, what kind of TV do you watch? You know, that kind ah. of thing. And um, if the questions were to go in such a way that somebody said, oh, I like graphic novels, I would just say, now, J.D.'s Hero Complex at 4327 Main Street in Manion, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, has a wall of trade paperbacks and so graphic many. novels and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Sounds like a good place. Yeah. It's a great place. Great place. And it's where Three we exclamation are right points. Now. Yes, Three. One more than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, for, oh yeah. yes, for you sure. Or your third exclamation point into the shop. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, much like Sandman in Neil Gaiman's hit series Sandman. Uh, so anyway, if, the titular Sandman. The titular Sandman, who, who very rarely is referred to as Sandman. That's true. Morpheus. Yeah, Morpheus. The dream. The, yeah. the dream. Um, but anyway, if they were to come in and say graphic novels, then I would direct them over here and I would explain. You know, like, well, hey, these are collected editions, and then try to get more info out gotcha. of them. That's what I would do. My, my point of view on graphic novel, mm-hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, but mm-hmm. don't, because I'm right, mm-hmm. um, is... Um, what if you're wrong? People, I'm not, <laughs> people say... They, I, I, there was a period of time yeah. where people called comic books graphic... Oh, I, I hurt myself. Mm. Mm. Also, you said my point of view, and correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you're really the ultimate authority. That's what I'm saying. This, okay, so you good. can't correct me. My no. point of view is mine. Yeah, sure. It's right. You have it. It's mine. It's your current experience. Um, people would call comics graphic novels uh-huh. to elevate uh-huh. comic books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To like, oh, I don't read comic books. Mm. I read graphic novels. Mm. You know, like around the time of Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Um, so I'm still of the mind of people are like, I like graphic novels. I kind of like, like, well, those are kind of the same. They're just comic yeah. books. Another word for comic books. Although I feel like comic book is really quite the misnomer. You know, it comes from... They're not always room. funny. Right. And they rarely are. I mean, not rarely. There's some funny stuff. Yeah. But I think they're even from a time when comics were collected newspaper strips. Funnies. That were mostly the funnies, funny. The funnies. The right, newspaper right. funnies, yeah. So... You know, and I, I know people like have struggled like sequential art. They yeah, call you it, can't you know, call it coming. sequential. You know. Nothing's gonna. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. Graphic novel, maybe. I mean, has taken off. Yeah, I'm okay. You I'm know. Okay yeah. Uh oh, I'm sorry. I guess we got some comments. Oh, uh, what did they say? I don't know. I gotta scroll up. Oh, there's so many. Scroll. Oh wait, never mind. I already read that one. No. I'll scroll back down. Yeah. Brains for dinner. Brains for lunch. Brains for breakfast. Brains for brunch. Brains at every single meal. Why can't we have some guts? Oi, oi, oi. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin Agnew. Um, yeah. Pretty sure, because of the oi's at the end. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a punk song that he's referencing. Or Yiddish. Millie. <laughs> <laughs> oi, with these brains oi, every vaults. day. Another brain. Oh, Where's well, the guts? That's uh-oh. what I'm wondering. Where's the guts? Um, Melly G. I am Jewish, if anybody's worried about me having done that accent. Right. <laughs> yes. Melly G says, does Far Sector come out in trade paperback? Yes. It, it will. Oh, for sure. For sure. One of the most um, guaranteed things to come out in trade paperback in recent memory. So, Mystery Brian, you are saying that home subscribers subscription comments uh-huh. are basically what is in the comic book store covers back in the day. Thanks. This is my guess. I'm, I, I only ever got one thing delivered and I don't remember. Um... But that's my guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Daredevil trade paperback. Volume four. Volume this one. Hell, end of hell. Will the devil of hell's kitchen make his return? I mean. Maybe, probably. Uh, He's on the cover. So. He's, and the back cover. Oh, two cover appearances. And it's named and after it's him. named after him. Yeah. Yeah. Although yeah. he does not star in the current Daredevil it's true. Run. Well, I mean, he, well, he's side, side. He is in it. Side stars. He he's co-stars. Side stars. He's side stars. He's got a side story in which he side stars. Yes. <laughs> um, for the X-Men. Okay. All right. Dawn of X number 11. 
the trade paperback for the X series. And this collects New Mutants 10 and 11, Wolverine 1, Excalibur 10, and Hellions 2 to 3. And then it turns into Reign of X. And this collects Sword number 1. So this picks up after. So if you're reading the X-Men numerically like a monster, if you're reading the Dawn of X trade paperbacks like a monster. Which kind of monster? Like a... Uh... Like a goon kind of monster, or yeah. something like that. Like a sea monster. Like a sea monster yeah. would read the trades. Um, then you would finish this Dawn of X, and then you would get the trade paperback for Ten of Swords. Sure. And then you would switch to Reign of X. Hmm. So we're going to go from Dawn of X to Reign of X Volume One, hmm. and this collects Sword Number One, X Men Number Sixteen, X Factor Number Five, and then Hellions. Seven and eight. Yeah. Weird, weird way to print your comic. Books. Yeah, I guess they want to be able to sell Ten of Swords independently. Yeah. And not call it this story part two or whatever. You know that kind of thing. Dungeons and Dragons oh. Fells Five. What is it? This a thick boy. Look thick with two C's. Two C's. Is there also a K or is it just the just two C? C's? It's T T H I C C. Okay. Yeah. Thick. Just want to know what's happening. Um, oh, everyone is Tulip. It's a very cool title. Look at that. It's kind of cool. Yeah. How far are you willing to go to get what you want? Everyone is Tulip by Nicole G O U X. G. G. Nicole G. G. Gooks. French. Oh. Probably. Probably not Gooks. It's just to spell it. Yeah, that's. It, no offense intended, of course. Yes, this of is, course. Yeah, yeah. Goosh. Gauche. Nicole, Nicole Gauche. Not someone you'd want at your dinner no, party. Very, very <laughs> gauche. Shades of the Batgirl. That's in parentheses because she wrote Shades of the Batgirl. Mm. And Dave Baker, the F-Off Squad, mm. follows an as aspiring actress named Becca Harper as she attempts to navigate the world of internet fame after a digital performance art piece goes viral. Becca's ever-expanding internet persona begins to creep into her real world as her circle of friends grows smaller and smaller. Interesting. He's vaping over here, so it, what, what's the flavor? It's a Swedish fish. Ooh. Yeah. It's my favorite kind of fish. I was vaping for a while there when it, when it, when it first hit. Yeah. Just because I like to have something to do with my hands. Like, I miss smoking yeah. because I was really into, like, the, the movement. Sure, sure. Like yeah. that. That's how everybody smokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I was like, ooh, I can have that, but then also it tastes like fruity pebbles. Right. Yeah. Thank yeah. I will do that. Yeah. And then I heard about like it's still bad for your lungs yeah. and the popcorn lung and uh, Yeah, there's a I mean it's not great. But I was hit me. Hit me. smoking. Hit me. All right. I mean not with your fist. Hit me with your plume. You mean it breathes directly in your face? Yeah. Okay. Hang on a second. You didn't it is there's nothing. Oh shit, that's that's good. That's I good. I was smoking and I was like, this would be better than smoking. Yes. And I'm going to switch to that now. I'm going to smoke. In a different way. And I'm, but if I'm not gonna smoke, yeah. then I'll do this. I'm, yeah. Either way, I'm gonna be harming myself. But, but this will be harming less. myself slightly less. And I've gone down in amounts of nicotine and just I'm known the lowest amount, and I have not for several years now made the jump down to completely no nicotine. And no. who knows what will happen. What if what if what if? What if yeah. Marvel Comics number? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> King of King and Black. Kate's Stegman. This is the sequel to Absolute Carnage. Yes. Was that it? Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, but Absolute Carnage was more of like, kind of like a pre, not a prequel, but a lead in, like a, a lead in, like a preamble. Like this yeah. is its own story, right? Yeah. That's what. It, so I. Read, this is continuing. Yeah. yeah. The storyline. The culmination. The culmination. Of all that Donny Cates has done with Venom before. Yes. And some Thor and Silver Surfer stuff is finds its way in there. Right? Like Silver Surfer Black. Kind of. No, not in this thing. Oh, like oh. storyline. Yes, yes. Like the culmination of yes. some stuff of that too. Um, and Modoc Head Games from Pat Oswald and Jordan Blum, executive producers of Marvel's MODOK animated series. 
And what does MODOK stand for? Man, oh, I think it's dick. Desi designed only for killing. Is yes. the D okay? Me 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 mechanism, mechanism, machine. Hmm. Obviously designed. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously designed only for killing. Look at him. He's a giant head. Yeah. What else would he do? Uh, shoot. I am looking it up. Not so quickly. Here we go. Mechanized organism ah, designed only for killing. Of course. So his name should be Mo Doc. Right? I hate when they I do that. Oh, I can't stand it. Designed only for killing. Like that would it. be Mo Do it better. Come up with something else. Modafk. The only one that I like is the <laughs> girls uh, from Calvin and Hobbes, where it's the final S of girls. Is it's, what? Is like in an acronym that he makes. Because his treehouse is like uh -huh. no girls allowed or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. And um, But obviously that's done humorously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, the final letter of the acronym is S, and it's the S in girls. Oh, cute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else is happening? Did you show them the child, Baby Yoda? Oh, no. Head? No, I didn't. How about these puzzles? I'm getting to it. I mean, do it. Here's the <laughs> child, and he's in like a sack. Look at him in that sack. He's in the little carrying yeah. sack. Was he in that in the show? Yeah, that's how he would carry him around, a little sack. Did he? Oh, I guess he did. A little side I sack. Thinking, I was thinking Remember, a little they, floating thing. They, but. The one stormtrooper punches him in the oh, sack. Yeah, right. Oh, that guy. Whoa, so oh, nice. that oh, boy, the vault. What's his problem? Um, all right, those are all special orders. We don't need to go through those. Um, Brian! JD! Bring me stuff. Here is some stuff. What's Look, this stuff? This is this puzzle? stuff? What's Look this, this puzzle? Stuff? Look at it. I'm showing it without you. Look at there this you puzzle. Go. It's uh, the eras of Spider Man, yeah. selected eras. And as you noticed last night, the numbering is all, uh, you know, endemic to the time when it when that art is from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Can can you name all of them? Yeah, Spider Man, and then that Spider Man again, uh -huh. and then there's Spider Man. Yeah, and then Spider Man and Spider Man, uh -huh. and then and Spider Man is the last one. He nailed it. Peter he's Parker. so good. He's so good. <laughs> That's why he's here. That's why I'm here. I tried to name them all and I Good. messed it up. I got say, I got uh, two in and I gave up. Like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, yeah. I think you said one <laughs> yeah, of them was. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's not even a comic, JD. Santa Claus? Yeah. I was like, well, the red coloring. <laughs> um Yeah, we this got? is a real cool poster. Are you you want to name the artist? Oh the art yeah, okay. Was that who you being were serious? Hoping to name? Uh let's see. That one is Ditko, right? Is it? Isn't it? Isn't that Amazing Fantasy Fifteen? Yeah. Or is that is Kirby? That, Did he do the cover? I uh, had Steve. There it's, we go. It's Jack Kirby. It's not Steve Ditko. There we go. Um, Steve Ditko's cover for it, I believe, was um, from the ground up. There were two covers for Amazing Fantasy Fifteen. Well, there was one that didn't get printed. Oh, I got you. Okay. The first one that Ditko had done, I believe, was like from the ground up. Or no, no, it was above Spider Man. So I think I've seen that. Yeah, it's like above yeah. Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it doesn't really give you the, the Spider-Man of it all. The Spider-Man of it all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is John Romita Jr. No, Senior. John Romita Senior. Mm. Who's this? Who, who's who's the black cover? Oh, is that George Perez? Nope. Oh, I don't know. Who never, he's never going to get. I don't it. know who did Secret Wars. Although it was the first trade paperback, I think I ever got. Oh. Um, nice. It was awesome. It was a good Mike one. Zek. Oh, okay. Mike Zek. Um, was Todd submitted by a reader, you know submitted a costume very similar to that. Yeah. And then I think it had a red emblem instead of white. Well, I mean, Mike Zek didn't design the costume. Right, right. That was... Um, this reader, really. Well, yeah, so does the reader. Yeah. Um, Todd McFarlane, Mark Bagley, Gabriel nice. Delato. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I got that as an early Christmas present one year, and it was cool. Yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. What, oh, what's happening over here? Oh, there, there's this, those are the damage. There's this other puzzle that just came out. Show the people the puzzle. It's a lot of Deadpools. Can you name all of them? There's a Deadpool Dorothy up here. Dorothy from Deadpool. The Wizard of Oz. That is more likely on this cover. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so many Deadpools. This is a puzzle. So good luck. 3,000 piece puzzle. Um, all right, what else? Anything else? Oh, yeah. 
Previews, the aforementioned previews comes out this week. Um, on the cover showcases Jeff Lemire's new upcoming series, Maze Book. And on the other side, what is this? Snake Eyes PVC Diorama. So a nice little statue of, of Snake Eyes. There's a Snake Eyes movie coming out eventually. And we got some children's books. Well, I'll tell you, I'm streaming currently on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitch. There you go. <laughs> so this is a, a, a children's book called My First Book of Girl Power. What if and, somebody already owns a book of girl power? Can they still buy that? Oh, uh, I mean, to somebody if they want to be a stupid liar. Oh, okay. And so what if they do want to be a stupid liar? Then they, <laughs> then, then yeah, they buy it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. great. <laughs> so you've got Fat Girl, you've got Wonder Woman, and Bumblebee. That's cool. Who's that on the back? And I have no idea who that is. Oh, no, I don't think it is. Uh, who she is looked, that? She looked kind of Wonder Woman-ish. That's why I thought. Yeah. Like, but she's in more of a, like a Norse kind of looking costume. You who know, is this? Anyone like, know? Just a fantasy? That's, oh. It's not often that we run across a comics character that neither one of us is familiar yeah. with at all. Uh, Molly says, she comments, we went back to being okay with breathing deliberately in others' faces so fast, LOL. We did. Well, just him, the, just me and know, him. Just the two of us. Yeah. 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 And really just me to him. Yeah. He tried the other day with and me. And he I was like, like no, breathe no, elsewhere. Don't do it. Breathe indeliberately at me. Um, Justin says, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Oh, me. You. Because um, you get breathed on? Oh, Kevin says Nubia. It is Nubia. Is it really? That's Nubia? I could see her having that costume in like the 70s. It's you a know? terrible costume. It looks a little like somebody a... trying to do Kirby. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? Looks like a little Prince Valiant. She's wearing an entire suit of armor yeah. and then a skirt on top of that. Well, they're Themyscarian, so the armor would move very well. That's true. Yeah. Uh, let's see. My first book of girl power. Yeah, when did she Girls are that? strong and kind. They can do amazing things. I agree. Wonder Woman uses her golden lasso to get people to tell the truth. Also, the guy who created Wonder Woman designed part of the polygraph test. Oh, I knew that. Yeah, yeah it's cool, right? Oh, you're, you know what? He's right. It is Nubia. Oh, nice. A super strong Amazon, Nubia knows the sis knows that sisterhood makes women even more powerful. You know what? Now that I see, she's got kind of, it's reminiscent of Wonder Woman's of the, eagle there, uh, the and eagle. she's got the skirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there anything you're looking for? No, I'm, I'm actually Oh. So, yeah, it goes on like that. My first book of girl power. Um... Diversity is a superpower. Superheroes look, act, and think differently in many ways. Beast Boy is green. Starfire is orange. Superheroes are lots of different colors. Bumblebee can be as tiny as a buzzing bee when she wants to shrink. Plastic Man can stretch to be really tall, or he can twist his turn his body however he likes. Superheroes come in different sizes and shapes. And it continues on. If you want to know how it ends, pick up your copy today. Um, Nubia in the OG armor. She is missing the full... She had a full face mask? Nubia had a full face mask? A full face mask. Hey, how are you? Um... Action Figure Expert says, just out of curiosity, since DC switched distributors, had this Marvel still have that Severance previous catalog? Previews. Yeah. Here you go, Brian. Here's the first 31 issues in one. By the way, Why the Last Man comes in a nice omnibus or a compendium. 31 issues. Um, yes. Um, action figure expert, you, they still have a Marvel previews catalog. I'll show you. Hey, Brian. Yes. Where'd you put the Marvel previews? Oh, well, they're over here. They action figure expert, I just want, oh, we just want one. I just want to show him one. There you go. Thanks, buddy. You got it. Here we go. So, yeah, inside the previews from Diamond, they still have the Marvel previews. <laughs> so yeah 
No. I don't think so, no. We can order some in. Yeah. Um, including. Uh, oh, I have one of those too. The entire Calvin and Hobbes in four awesome. soft covers. How did you just pull that out of the Yeah, that was. I ordered impressive. it. So I just have. I just. I have a son now. <laughs> I have a new son. Yeah. Um, and I, I got this for for me to read to him. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And I also got him a house. Yes, that is yeah. awesome. You got like an actual soft house. For his, really? for his Can I, I'll show you. I say. I want to show somebody my, my baby. We're just talking about Kevin Hart. Isn't that cool? He's so adorable and he's so cute. Oh my God. That's a pretty good Hobbs, right? I grew up with Hobbs and Hobbs. That's why I love it so much. Same. All right, so some novels. Star Wars The High Republic is out in cover. So this is the Charles Soule written Light of the Jedi, which is the new era of Star Wars stories that are about 200 years before the Skywalker saga. So yeah, this is nice soft cover just came out. Hey, what's Brian K. Vaughan's publishing? Remember the image? DC? What's your no, question? No, no, no. The thing that he started oh, for it. online. Yeah. It is panelsyndicate.com. Okay. Um, what else? There's more Star Wars. Hold on. Yeah, we can start with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, oh. Yeah, I set three aside there for you. Guys. How much is that? That's 125. Can I get a, can I order for that? Yeah, for sure. If you don't mind putting down like a little bit of a down payment. Oh, yeah. Um, so for five. See what's worth of down payment. I know, 20 bucks. Have a good one. Thank you. Um, we got some t-shirts in. Normally, I only carry the t-shirts that I design and print myself, but I saw these in the previews catalog, and so I ordered a bunch of Superman Pride shirts, Wonder Woman Pride shirts, and Batman Pride shirts. So, yeah. Oh, bam! Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, you more Star Wars? Yes. Where's the? Looking for those new Star Wars novels. The new Star Wars novels. Ah! There you go. Ha! Also, don't forget this. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Um, Epic, Epic Spell Wars is a really fun card board game. Not well, not a cardboard game. It's a card game. I'm calling it a board game. It's really a card game. Uh, it's awesome. It is so much fun. Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards High Jinx at Hell High. Super fun. Super fun. Oh, speaking of, I got some more of those, those books. Superhero ABC. Also with Nubia and Batman. And I'm assuming that's Calderon, Aqualad. Really? They don't start with A? Oh, no, there we go. A, Aqualad, Aquaman. B, Black Lightning, Batman. C, or where, where's C? Oh, C, C for Cape. I mean, they could have done Captain Adam, but they went for Cape. All right. Dog, Escape. They could have gone for Elastic Man or Elongated Man. Yeah. If you want to know how the, the, the alphabet ends. Come pick up a copy. Um, this is my first book of superpowers. Um, all right. Is there anything you're looking for, bud? Is there anything you're looking for? He's got his headphones in, I think. What's up? I have no idea. I mean, it's, isn't it on Amazon? It's on Amazon. Under the Air by... Asamu Tezuka. I thought it looks it looks very much like a um, Junji Ito horror manga from science fiction, historical fiction to contemporary drama. Under the Air includes a variety of tales that depict the duality of man, good and evil, loving and violent. Interesting. So that's a neat manga that comes out this month or this week 
you have any questions? Um, I'm just looking around. I was in here like um, two or three months ago, and uh, I had, like ordered some shirts from you. Okay. Um, I came in like a month later, and you said that they just weren't done yet. Gotcha. Um, Brian. Yes. What's your name? Alex Murray. What were the shirts? Um, there was one. You know, it's been so long. I don't okay. even remember. Man. I can look it up. Yeah. I think one of them was a darn darko one. Oh, that's because you needed me. I needed to finish the artwork before I could make a shirt out. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's not that it was an image that wasn't like I just haven't finished drawing. It. I got you. Yeah, that was like, I said when I when I get around to finishing the yeah. illustration, I'll make a shirt for you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Star Wars: The High Republic's next novel called The Rising Storm and the Hardcover comes out this week. I'm very excited. I liked Light of the Jedi. Um, and this is more of, um, this is by Caven Scott. So I got a bunch, a bunch of those. I'm excited. Boom. Boom. And I think that might be it. Is, is that it? Did I do it? I think I'm done. I did it. I win. Um, let's see. Kevin says, I need those books. My son already has a few of um, emotion and kindness DC board books. Are you showing her the picture? I, I was, yes. Molly, I showed her the picture of Kai and the Hobbs that you took. Um, sorry, I meant this Marvel still have that separate with the lone previous catalog. You know what I mean? That's what I was just showing you. It's the Marvel previews catalog. Just came out. Those the child. Yeah. Are they yeah, they're for sale. They're ready to go. Perhaps this gentleman would like one of those. Perhaps. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, again, tonight is movie club. We're going to be talking about Luca, which is the. Um, oh, I need the. I need the text. Pink apocalypse. Um. So, it wasn't this one. So. Give me a second. Tonight is Luca from Pixar. There we go. Um, so yeah, tonight we're gonna be talking about Luca. At Eight o'clock on Zoom. You can go to the um, Facebook group if you don't know about it. You can join us on Facebook. There is a group called JD's Hero Complex Book Club, and that's where we vote on what the books the movies are going to be that's where we um post the the link the zoom link 14. um you know was it 14.99 or something there's i mean there's a button Just for regular button. yeah there's there's oh. a button for it i don't know if it was regular though shoot is it not now you got me wondering i don't know i mean it's different than the other one it's, it's heavier for one thing where's the um it's in, it's no, it's there it is nope that's not nope there it is i think nope nope Nope. Where's all the comics? It's in that one. Oh. Uh. oh. Well, well, well. Nope. No. <laughs> 14. 14. 14. Yeah. It's 14. Okay. Wait, is that it? No. Oh. No. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. No. no. <laughs> 14. That was fun. It's fun. <laughs> He's been waiting for a t shirt. 14 yeah, yeah. fun. All right. That was fun. Um, have a wonderful rest of the day. JD and Brian and everyone else, too. Oh, thank you. Melly G says, have a wonderful day. Oh, I, I hope that she has a wonderful day as well. Tell her to have a wonderful day. One exclamation point. That's fine. Brian says, I hope you have a wonderful day as well. No exclamation points. Have a wonderful day. Oh, that was at least. Exclamation point. There we go. One exclamation point. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, join us this Sunday when we uh, will do the live stream podcast for Spoiler Alert. We talk about this week's comics. We review them. We'll probably talk about, I don't know, Loki? Uh, probably. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks. Love you. I will talk at you later.